my name is Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. I have more books that I am really excited to talk about and let's just jump into that. So the first book that I want to talk about I heard about from um, Nyx over at Nyx Read so I'll make sure to link her channel down below and this is The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson. This book follows June Jones who works at her local library and the council is has some plans to shut down the library and so it goes with she bands together and helps this group of library patrons try to save the local library and along the way she kind of breaks out of her shell and maybe finds love. What I really liked about this book was the message about libraries. I love the idea of libraries as a social safety net, as a place for communities to grow and learn together. I think that a lot of that was touched upon, the importance of public libraries in communities. I know that when I move somewhere, my first thing is to go to the local library, figure out if they have any fun community programs I can be involved in, what kinds of things. It's not just do we have access to books because sure, I have access to books online, I can get books, but libraries as that community aspect. And so I really liked the book for that. And this was a fun light read. And it, I found it really engaging. So I was really excited, like I wanted to read it. And I thought it was fun and light and interesting. But because I was so involved in it, I have things I wanted to fix. So <clears throat> welcome to Hannah Fixes The Last Chance Library. So our main character is June and she has some pretty severe anxiety, some social anxiety, some she just can't break out of her shell. And she's got some issues, her mom died, she can't let go of some of the stuff that her mom did. There's, there's some things going on in June's life, right? Now, throughout the book, she learns that she has people that love and care for her through her work at the library and that's where she's got her source of connection and it helps her come out of her shell. I understood that as a journey but the level of anxiety that June showed especially toward the beginning of the book seemed a little more clinical to me like I feel like she maybe needed some actual therapy or medication or something and maybe that's just coming from my own personal experience but I would have liked to maybe see as she realizes that she has this support system that they can support her into maybe getting the help she needs through you know maybe a professional maybe some real things that she has to work through instead of just oh wait i have friends now i'm not anxious anymore i thought that maybe there was a little more depth that could go into that way um there was also her struggle to let go of her mother and I feel like the book was trying to connect it to letting go of the library and letting go of her mother were kind of connected and I feel like it could have been more powerful if instead of finally she decides to maybe let some of the things go from her mother if she could have included her friends from the library and they could have supported her in that to kind of reinforce those ideas of the community aspect of libraries supporting people in different aspects of their lives. I thought that that could be really good or maybe there was a support group for grief that was at the library that she went to and found healing or solace from. I thought that maybe we could have seen more resources from the library being utilized to help her in her mental health journey. I think most of my problem, I think the mental health aspect, was that I didn't see any real struggle or internal work that went into her anxiety and maybe it's just me projecting and her stuff was purely situational and when she found out she had friends she's fine but the way that it was portrayed especially toward the beginning it felt like she might need some real resources to help her work through things and I thought that that's the perfect opportunity for the library to step in because libraries have resources. And I thought that maybe there could have been some sort of connection that way. And for our wonderful love interest in the book, it's cute, it's fine. I enjoy romance books of the sort that the romance isn't the focus, but it just happens to come along. But I did feel like the, the our leading man didn't have much of a role in the book aside from he happens to be there and he likes the main character. That seemed to be his only role and I would have maybe liked if he had some of his 
own life and problems going on at the same time to make him feel like a more fully developed character. So I was thinking it would be really great if maybe his dad was a member of the council and he had some of that struggle with not wanting to be involved in these protests if it could hurt his dad who he's been taking care of all these years. Or maybe since he's a lawyer he could have been working for a company who was trying to buy the um, library and he could have maybe some struggle on whether he should um, give up this job, even though it's a great opportunity or whatever. And I, instead, instead of doing that, I do feel like the book relied a little bit on that miscommunication trope for, um, the small amount of conflict between the two main characters, because really this wasn't focused as much on the romance. It, it was focused on the library, but I did think that they used miscommunication when it could have been maybe a more meaningful discussion about the library or brought it all together um, into some kind of point and I just thought he was kind of a fluffy extra character instead of somebody who was fully developed and had real meaning. So from all my criticisms here, how I was going to fix the book, it does not mean that I didn't like this book or don't recommend it. I thought this book was a lot of fun. I definitely recommend it. I just was enjoying myself enough that I really thought it could have been better and I <laughs> enjoyed my time. So if you've read this book, let me know. Am I right? Am I wrong? What would you change in this book? So I read the book, The Girls Who Went Away, The Hidden History of Women Who Surrendered Children for Adoption in the Decades Before Roe v. Wade by Anne Fessler. And this was a very powerful book. So in material, wise it was very similar to a book I read a few months ago I read um American Baby and that was following a specific story during this time period through this woman giving up her child and her search to find him and them being reunited it followed that and gave a lot of background and I thought that that was such an important story now this book gives some background but instead of being one woman's story all the way across it is a compilation of so many different women and their experiences going through um, surrendering a child. I thought that this book was five star, so amazing, just reading the experiences from so many different women and having them all there and then the author putting in some context, putting in some information. I thought it was very interesting and I think that this is a topic that is important. There are so many things that are so important that go into this. So I mean, I do recommend this one and American Baby. I thought that both of those were really good to shed light on a subject that is difficult for so many people and has touched so many people's lives. I mean, everybody, I mean, not to generalize, but I think everybody knows somebody who was adopted or who's given up a baby for adoption or has somehow been touched by this subject. And I think that it's really important to understand what has gone into this, what pressures were on these women to give up babies when that might not have been the right thing for them or not what they wanted. And the trauma that women would go through having their babies taken away and the coercion and understanding all those different things and understanding how things have changed and how things still need to change. I think that super great, five stars, highly recommend. I listened to Happy Go Lucky by David Sedaris and if you have read any books by David Sedaris you're gonna enjoy this. It's a collection of essays, talks about his life, and is just funny. I enjoyed this collection. I had a good time with it. Anytime I listen to David Sedaris I find it really comforting and I find myself laughing out loud a few different times. I enjoy this. So I thought this one was really good. Now if you've never read David Sedaris don't start with this one, please. I just don't think you will get it, enjoy it as much. I think if you want more David Sedaris, yeah, this book is fine, but it kind of was a little darker and maybe a little less optimistic on life in some ways. I think if you listen to it, it's a lot better because I feel like the delivery was, is what makes it. I really like listening to this. Like highly recommend David Sedaris, listen to him because I think his delivery is really great. Um, I just think that this isn't my favorite of all the David Sedaris. Like, 
go read me talk pretty one day i think that one's so fun but i do love david scenarios i think there are a lot of things that i find really relatable when he talks about living in france and having to learn french and not really being able to communicate very well and um just that frustrating like i'm really smart and funny if i was speaking in english but i'm not like i i really relate to that there is a reason that David Sedaris has been popular for so long and is such a well-known humorist. He's just, he's funny, irreverent. It's, uh, it's a fun take on things and I enjoy his sense of humor. So Caitlin over at Bandy's Books recommended the book We Are Not Like Them by Christine Pride and Joe Piazza. This book is following two women who have been best friends from the time that they were very young. And we have, um, Riley and she is a newscaster and is you know being pretty successful and seeing some good opportunities for advancement in her career and things are going well for her and she is black and then we have her friend who is white who is um trying to get pregnant with IVF has been trying and finally successfully is going to have a baby soon. Things start to become very strained in their relationship when Jen's husband, who is a police officer, shoots an unarmed 14-year-old black kid. And that's kind of where our story starts. The book is following the aftermath of this shooting and what's gonna happen in the court cases. Are we gonna have prison time? What's gonna happen when Riley is covering it as a newscaster and there's all that going into it. And that's what the book is about. So I thought that there were so many parts of it that really ring true in the conversation space. It felt very much like I've seen these conversations taking place and I think it's important that we have these kinds of conversations. And I thought it was really important to see both Jen and Riley learn and grow. And it was frustrating when you felt like certain characters weren't learning and growing as quickly as you would like but I think that's true to life too that people aren't going to understand people aren't going to have those difficult conversations about race and they're gonna feel uncomfortable it was good because I feel like I've seen a lot of these kinds of conversations taking place and it was good to see that they don't always go well and things aren't gonna it's not gonna be a comfortable experience but that doesn't mean we had one bad argument and our relationship and our friendship is over. It's that you keep trying and you keep trying to have these important conversations and talk about these difficult topics. Both these characters are in really impossible places and understanding what is going on in their lives and having that um, forgiveness and love and understanding, but also understanding that things aren't going to be right and things aren't going to be okay. I thought that there were a lot of things that were really important um, in this. So I thought that this book had a lot of really good things. Um, I liked the characters and I liked their friendship. I thought that it was great to see a friendship that could go through difficult, horrible things and be reinvented and see how things go from there. Like, I think that the only m two downsides that I can see in this book, because I still, I kind of think it's like five stars. I think everybody should read it. I think it was really good. I have just two small little things on this. My first was I thought that some stuff in the ending seemed a little convenient and wow, things worked out. I would have liked to see some things not work out quite as well. Um, and also, I did think that in parts, sometimes the friendship seemed too one-sided and you wanted a more reciprocal friendship. You were wondering sometimes, what is Riley getting out of this relationship, this friendship? I thought that maybe if the author wanted to have the power of friendship kind of being one of the central themes to uh, maybe make that friendship seem a little more reciprocal, I thought that that would have been good, but like, that, those were minor complaints. It was more just like, as I was reading it, I'm like, wow, this is so great. And then I get to the very end. And then like after a day of thinking about it, I'm like, um, maybe just, 
maybe just a little, just a little bit. But I thought this was really good. I think everybody should read it. So if you have read any of these books, leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear what you think of them. I should be back soon with another book wrap up. And in the meantime, feel free to check out my Instagram at Savage Reads Books. And I will see you all on the next one.